Welcome to Great North Aleworks. We are a 20 barrel production brewery located in Manchester, the largest city in New Hampshire. We were founded in 2015 by Rob and Lisa North, husband and wife and co-owners. When you look closely at our logo, you'll notice that there's a G for Great, an N for North, and mountain peaks that are representative of what you'll find in the Great North. Rob and Lisa are originally from Nova Scotia, Canada, but their corporate IT jobs are what brought them both to the United States years ago. Canada is commonly referred to as the Great White North, and the fact that their last name is North meant that Great North Aleworks was the perfect name for their new brewery. As longtime homebrewers, Rob and Lisa found great joy in their homebrewing hobby, and it was a way for them to be creative when they were away from their desk jobs. But it wasn't until 2007 when they moved to Manchester, New Hampshire, and they joined Brew Free or Die, New Hampshire's largest homebrew club, that they realized they could take their passion to the next level. They began entering competitions, and they started to win awards for their homebrew at the club, state, and national levels. The turning point came in 2010 when Rob won the Patriot Homebrew Competition, which meant that he got to go to Sam Adams in Boston, where he met Jim Cook, the owner, and he got the opportunity to brew his beer on their system. His beer was then on tap at Gillette Stadium for the entire Patriots season that year. A year later in 2011, Rob decided to quit his job to pursue his dream of opening a brewery. In 2013, Rob became the first assistant brewer at Newbury Port Brewing Company in Massachusetts. At Newbury Port, he transitioned his homebrewing skills to the professional level system, all the while refining his business plan, seeking out financing, and searching for a location for the brewery. Shortly after leaving Newbury Port in the fall of 2014, Rob and Lisa signed a lease on a warehouse space in the industrial part of Manchester. Not long after that, in the spring of 2015, they had secured financing with the bank, and for the first time, their dream felt real. Construction started immediately, and the first project that we had to tackle were the floors. We had to dig down through the concrete to reach the dirt below. Trench drains were installed, and new concrete was laid with a gradual slope to direct liquid to the middle. And finally, a special red epoxy was applied over top of the concrete to protect it from the harsh chemicals that we use on a daily basis to clean the tanks. Between May and June of 2015 is when all of the stainless steel arrived, including the fermentation tanks and the brew system itself. It took the engineers about a month to set up the tanks, get them plumbed, and connect all of the wiring. By July, we were ready to use Rob's original homebrew system to test our core recipes one last time. We brewed on our 20 barrel production system at the beginning of August, and by the end of August, all of our core brands were packaged and ready to be picked up by our distributor, Amiskeg Beverages, and shipped across the entire state of New Hampshire. Thanks to Amiskeg, from day one, our beer could be found in hundreds of locations, including supermarkets, specialty beer stores, gas stations, and on tap in restaurants across the entire state. A brew day at Great North always begins with our base malt, which is stored in a grain silo out back that can hold up to 75,000 pounds of the North American two-row malted barley. Each delivery brings approximately 45,000 pounds, and we use on average 1,100 pounds per batch of beer. The base malt provides little flavor, but is used mainly to provide the yeast with sugar that it can consume and convert into alcohol during fermentation. An auger inside a PVC pipe connected to the bottom of the silo will drag the base malt up and into the brewery where a hanging scale will weigh out 100 pounds at a time before dumping it into the mill. The mill has rollers that will break apart the husk of the grain to expose the kernel on the inside and prepare the grain for steeping. Specialty malt is what provides the base of the beer, the color, flavor, and body. Specialty malt is roasted in a kiln to varying degrees to provide different flavor characteristics. It comes in 50 pound sacks that are hand loaded into the hopper of the mill. Once in the mash tun, we steep the grain at around 150 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes to extract flavor, color, and sugar. The sugary liquid created from this step in the process is called wort, W-O-R-T. 
After the mash is complete, the physical grain is no longer needed. The mash tun has what we call a false bottom that allows all of the liquid to drain out of the tank, leaving the grain behind. The grain is dumped into plastic barrels belonging to farmers from around the state of New Hampshire. The farmers come on brew day to pick up the grain which they then use to feed their animals. There is lots of residual protein and nutrients in the grain which is great for the animals to eat. We don't have to pay the farmers to pick it up and they in turn don't have to pay us for food to feed their animals. It's a win-win situation and a unique relationship that exists between farmers and breweries around the world. The wort is transferred from the mash tun to the boil kettle where it is boiled for 60 minutes. The wort is boiled to kill off bacteria and wild yeast that could otherwise harm the finished beer. The boil is when the hops are added for the first time as well. Hops are weighed out and added to the boil during three different stages. At the beginning of the boil to add hop bitterness, during the middle to add hop flavor, and then hops added at the end of the boil will mostly provide the beer with hop aroma. The wort is then cooled down to room temperature and sent into a fermentation tank where yeast is added. A single batch of beer takes around 5 hours to brew and then another 2-3 to three weeks to ferment and condition in the cellar before it's ready to be packaged. At Great North, we use a mobile canning company called Ironheart to help package our beer. Ironheart is a Connecticut-based company that use mobile canning lines to help small to mid-sized craft breweries can their beer. Larger breweries such as Smutty Nose in New Hampshire and Long Trail in Vermont have even used Ironheart before investing in their own lines. Ironheart's canning line fits in the back of a small box truck, which they back up to our bay door. They wheel the line into the brewery and set it up over top of one of our trench drains. They can set the line up and have it ready to go in less than an hour. When the line is operating at full speed, it can package 40 cans a minute, which equals a full pallet, or 100 cases of beer every hour. Using Ironheart from the get-go allowed us to save on startup costs by not needing to purchase our own canning line. Going forward, we do plan to invest in our own to save money in the long run and to give ourselves flexibility when packaging our beer. With the rise of the canning industry and craft beer, there have been dozens of new types of businesses started just to service the expanding sector. One Oregon-based company by the name of Pactech has designed a new can holder made out of 96% recycled plastic. We currently use their six-pack holders, but they also have a two-pack and a four-pack design. The Pactech holders have finger holds that allow the customer to easily pick them up with two fingers, and they are reusable in the sense that cans can be snapped in and out of them. The plastic holder also protects the tops of the cans from dust and debris, and they are also designed so that animals cannot become stuck in them if they are carelessly discarded. And finally, they just look really great and they help to improve the entire can look for merchandising purposes. Now the reason that we decided to package our beer in cans versus glass bottles was first and foremost the quality of the beer. Cans act as mini kegs in the sense that they do not allow any light to get through and negatively affect the beer. Even the darkest of brown glass bottles will let some amount of light in and degrade the quality of the beer over time. Can technology has come a long way, and modern day cans have a BPA-free inner plastic liner that protects the beer from the aluminum outer wall. Consumers no longer have to worry about off flavors in the beer or adverse health effects associated with the metal can. In addition to keeping the beer fresher longer, cans are less expensive than bottles, which makes them a more economical solution. They are more recyclable than bottles, therefore they are more eco-friendly. Cans stack better and take up less space than bottles, so we can fit more in our warehouse. Cans will not break and shatter like glass bottles, making them much safer to work with. And cans are also very lightweight and consumers can easily throw them in the cooler when they head to the beach, the race, concert, or toss them in their backpack when they go hiking. Once the beer is consumed, there is virtually no weight and therefore it's not much of a concern. For quite a while in the craft brewing industry, there was a stigma attached with using cans. However, now that the facts about cans are more widely known, most have realized that the pros 
heavily outweigh the cons with using cans, and what was once a trend in the industry has now become the gold standard. At Great North, we use quite a few cans. In 2016, our first full calendar year, we packaged close to a million cans of beer. Our cans are manufactured by Crown Beverage Packaging based out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Each pallet of empty cans is made up of 8,169 cans. The minimum order quantity is a full truckload, or 24 pallets of over 8,000 cans apiece, for a total order of 196,056 cans. In today's world of craft beer, consumers enjoy their options. It is hard to pick just one style to drink. That's why variety packs have become such a popular option for when you simply cannot make up your mind. The Great North Variety 12 pack consists of three cans of four different styles, India Pale Ale, Robust Vanilla Porter, Tie Dyed, and a Rotating Seasonal. And yes, the variety packs are all put together by hand. Kegged beer is also a large part of our business. We typically do not put an entire batch of beer into cans, so the remaining beer in the tank after canning day is put into kegs. In terms of volume measurement in the beer industry, liquid is measured in barrels. A barrel of beer is 31 gallons. The two most common keg sizes are 1 sixth of a barrel, commonly referred to as logs or sixtals, and half barrels. A half barrel keg holds 15 and a half gallons of beer, and a sixtal holds 5.16 gallons. Although most of our kegs are picked up by Amoskeg and distributed to restaurants and bars, we do sell both sizes of kegs directly to consumers upon request and based on availability. Once kegs are full of beer, they are immediately placed inside of our walk-in cooler to ensure that the beer stays fresh until Amoskeg is able to come and pick them up or until we are ready to tap a new keg up front in our tasting room. All of our hops are also cold stored inside of our walk-in to ensure their freshness. We use hop distributors that source the hops from growing regions around the world. They pelletize the hops and ship them to us in vacuum sealed bags to increase their longevity. After a long day of canning and kegging our beer, Amskeg arrives to pick it all up. But before they do, they replenish our wooden pallets as well as return to us our empty kegs that were returned to them from bars, restaurants, and beer stores. They then load the freshly packaged cans and kegs and take them to their warehouse where they will await distribution. Upon receiving our empty kegs back from Amoskeg, we fire up our keg washer to begin a lengthy cleaning process. Our keg washer can accommodate both sizes of kegs that we use, and it is able to clean two kegs during a single cycle. A cleaning cycle takes approximately five minutes to complete, and some days we have to clean well over a hundred kegs. The machine has two hoses with American Sankey couplers on the ends. The couplers connect directly to the tops of the kegs. The kegs are flipped upside down and placed on the keg washer. During a cycle, the keg washer will purge the kegs of remaining beer, if any exists, before rinsing them with fresh water. It then sends a hot caustic chemical into the kegs to clean and remove all organic material. The washer again rinses the kegs with fresh water before sending in a no-rinse parasitic acid sanitizer. To finish the cycle, the machine will pressurize the kegs with CO2, at which point the kegs are clean and ready to be filled with fresh beer once again. It's safe to say that the vast majority of work that takes place in a brewery is cleaning, and kegs aren't the only pieces of equipment that need it. 
After packaging day is over, a fermentation tank undergoes a very similar cleaning regimen that the kegs do. Caustic is used to remove the extraneous wort protein, hop resins, and dead yeast, commonly referred to as croisin, that collects and adheres to the inside wall of the stainless steel fermenter. A pump is used to create a loop that will circulate the caustic throughout the tank. The fermenter has an arm that extends down from the top of the tank, which the pump connects to. At the end of the arm, on the inside of the top of the tank, there is a metal spray ball with small holes drilled all around its surface. When caustic is sent up the arm and through the spray ball, it is sent with high pressure in all directions to clean the tank. The tank is rinsed with fresh water and then sprayed with a parasitic acid sanitizer, leaving it sparkling clean. At Great North Aleworks, we're more than just a production brewery. Part of what makes us who we are are the connections that we are able to form with our loyal customers through our big and beautiful tasting room. We offer samples, sample flights, and pints of all of our different styles of beer. We also have a food menu for those looking for a snack or even a meal to go along with their beverage. In the tasting room, customers can get a growler or grab six pack cans of our beer to go. In addition, we also have a retail store full of Great North clothing and merchandise for those looking to show off their favorite brewery to their friends and family. Our tasting room is also available to rent for private events, and past events include bridal showers, rehearsal dinners, birthday parties, fundraising nights, and corporate gatherings. For current tasting room hours or to inquire about a private event, please visit our website at greatnorthaleworks.com. We currently have two different sizes of growlers that customers can purchase when they come into the brewery, a 32 ounce and a 64 ounce. Every time a customer brings their growler in for a refill, the growler that they bring in goes through a cleaning process before it is ever used again. Just like the fermentation tanks and the kegs, the growlers go through a three-step cleaning process. Caustic is used to clean, fresh water to rinse, and a parasitic sanitizer to ensure that they stay clean. Once the growlers are sanitized, they are allowed to drip dry for a few minutes before being capped and then returned to the tasting room. New Hampshire state law requires breweries to fill growlers that have only their name on it. We cannot clean and fill a growler that a customer purchased from a different brewery, although we can clean and fill a blank growler with no labeling. In such a case, we will place a sticker on the cap to mark the contents of the growler so that there is no confusion about what beer is inside. A policy unique to Great North is that a customer can trade us a growler belonging to a different brewery in exchange for one of ours of equal size, at no cost for the glass. Normally there is a fee for the glass bottle in addition to the beer itself when buying a new growler, but we waive that fee when someone trades us one of theirs. Just months after opening our doors, we entered three of our core beer styles into the World Beer Cup, the largest professional beer competition in the world. Our India Pale Ale took the silver medal for the American Style IPA category, in which there were nearly 300 entries from breweries of all different nations, and by far the most popular beer style currently among craft beer consumers. It's incredible to think that one of our beers is the second best brewed beer of its kind in the entire world. And not only that, we're just getting started. Oh!